Today we're going to open the box up on a Chicago Electric Power Tools outdoor electric pole saw. One and a half horsepower. It extends from six to eight feet ten inches. Nine and a half inch bar, Oregon chain, an automatic chain oiler. And a kickback design and hand guard. I have a lot of fruit trees, need a lot of trimming, that's why I bought it. And we're going to see what comes in the box. I bought this at Harbor Freight. The regular price is $99. They had it on sale for $79. And I had a coupon that took it down to $65. That's about 35% off. I got a pretty good deal on it. Harbor Freight. Don't go there without your coupons. You always get something free or 20% off or... Uh, it's a man's candy store. Everything from drill bits to sprayers, chainsaw sharpeners, hand tools, of all types. I even bought myself a new two gallon sprayer. I uh, have a three gallon sprayer, kind of starting to wear out. This will be a little bit lighter to carry around for spraying in the garden and the fruit trees. So, Stick around, we'll see what's in the pole saw box. This is the business end of the saw. It has a uh, sight gauge for the bar oil and the filler cap. And the electric motor is up on this end. And we'll have to install the bar and chain. Here's what else comes in the box. First thing there is a chain guard, a chain bar, the saw chain itself. Instructure, instruction manual and safety instructions with a little tool there it's a flat blade screwdriver on one end and an allen wrench on the other it says it has a 7 amp motor 9.5 inch bar and a telescoping fiberglass shaft this is a locking mechanism for when you extend it to unlock and lock whatever length you want I can tell you that this end is heavy it's a two handed Saw, you'll have to hold hold it kind of like you would an oar, you know, with one hand out along and the other hand operating it. I can't see how you could operate with one hand. It does weigh, I don't know, 12 pounds, something like that. I'm just guessing, but it's not light. I'll uh, look for a weight on the box, see if I can find out exactly what it weighs. It is made in China, specifically for Harbor Freight. The instructions are only provided in English, so if you have trouble with the English language, you'll have to have somebody read it to you, I guess. This is one of the first instructions that I've found that wasn't bilingual. There's seven steps to uh, assembling the unit, and the only tool you need is the one they provide, the Allen wrench with the flat screwdriver on one end. Start out by uh, disassembling a sprocket clamp that's in the machine and then putting the bar and chain on and uh, adjusting it and pretty much filling it up with oil so we're going to start on the assembly first step was simple removing that gray cap to expose the chain sprocket now is when you put on your leather gloves because saw chain chainsaw chains are extremely sharp and you will be handling a sharp chain so I should have mentioned my leather gloves earlier I won't even take the chain out of the wrapper until I put my leather gloves on the next step asks you to spread the chain out with the cutting edges of the chain pointing in the direction of rotation but there's no direction of rotation marked on this part of the saw but there is on the gray cap here so the direction of rotation is the sharp edge pointing along with the arrow or you can orient it to the cap where when the saw is in this position the cutting edges are going this way away from the cap and this way on the cap side. Next is to slide the chain around the sprocket tip and through the slots on this bar. 
double check your orientation of your cutting edges. Now we're going to set it down on the sprocket and the adjustment. Chain adjustment. Like so. Pay attention carefully here. You see this little silver top hat thing right there in the center? That's supposed to go in this hole here. And whenever you get the saw, it won't be anywhere near that hole. And then, so you have to move it up so it's closer to that hole even before you start to put that on there. Now that I moved this silver button, all well, probably about a half inch closer to the rear of the saw, the bar slipped down in a straight fashion and the sprockets uh, has the chain around it loosely. Now we're replacing the chain sprocket cover. Pretty simple with a tool provided. And next step will be filled up with 30 weight oil or bar chain. I've uh, read a lot of the reviews. Some people say that the typical bar chain oil that they buy is too thick and they switched over to 30 weight motor oil. It's uh, probably cheaper and more effective. They say it'll run a half an hour on a fill of uh, 30 weight oil, plus or minus a few minutes. You have to pay attention to your oil levels if you're on a long job because uh, it'll cause excessive wear in your chain. Now it's time to adjust the chain properly. That covers on tight. usually like to get a little rise when I pull on my chain. It means it's not too loose or too tight, but you have to have a little bit of, you know, want it dead tight or it'll just wear out the tip here trying to get around this bend and cause flat spots on your bar and wear out your bar and your chain race. So you need a little bit of slack, about that much I would say. That's about a quarter of an inch. I hit the nail on the head with that one. I'm going to double check this chain cover. There will be vibration, you don't want to leave any loose bolts. Filling the oil cap can be a little bit tricky. You have to lean it against something. Uh, it won't lay flat with the filler up into the air. But also the tank is pretty small. So whenever you get your quart of oil or whatever you're taking it from, I used a gallon jug and I started glugging it in there. It filled up really quick and I just about overflowed it. So it, it only takes a small amount. I'm going to say probably uh, less than a cup. I went to plug it in, found this little white thing over top of the prongs. Pull, it pulls straight off. I don't know, I don't know what that gets for. Pretty nifty though. We're all hooked up with our extension cord. Here's my opportunity. This is a dwarf peach tree. The last tree I planted for my mother probably about 25 years ago. He got some kind of a disease last year and died. A pear that's now 15 feet tall and should only be about 10 feet tall. If that. Two apples going down the row there. And I have a lot more trees on the other side of the property. Probably about 10 in all that I'll be using this pole saw. I have two monstrous magnolias in the front. They're growing over top of the telephone lines and stuff. Need trim back. And this is going to be a lot easier than getting up on a ladder with a handsaw or a chainsaw. Which is pretty gasoline chainsaw. It's pretty dangerous. The electric motor won't start unless you press this green button here and then the trigger. I have the blade laying on the ground so I won't test it for you, but you have to hold that in so that's a safety feature. We're going to make our first cut on a dead peach. I have fully extended it so you can see how long it is. You can, uh, it's got a pretty good reach in it, but once you get that motor out on the end of the pole, you're holding up some weight. So here we go, first cut.
That's pretty impressive for $65. Now we're off to the burn pile. Now we're going to try it on this pear tree. About 18 feet or so. Pretty good. I've been using the saw up about a 20 minutes, probably five minutes total runtime, and I glanced at my oil gauge and I thought it was empty because it was all the same color. Took the cap off and it's clear full. It's not putting out any oil. So that's a problem. I'm gonna have to look into that. Go read the instructions first. There's an adjustment on there. I put the correct oil in. I don't think anything's coming out. There's no mention in the instructions for how to increase or decrease the oil flow. So, I'm at a loss what to do there. So I'll go back to the old tried and true. And I'll run some oil on from my oil can until I have time to uh, properly assess whether it's just putting a proper amount on or it's not putting any on but I'm going to finish up this job and show you the results well there we have it about uh, half hour time's gone by I had a conversation with the neighbor came over and he approves the pole saw the two problems that uh, I encountered job is there's no oil coming out of the tank so I'll have to look into that and the other one is when you have the saw on the tree you're operating it you cannot see the blade past the motor the motor is big enough and such that and the blade is short enough that you just can't see it so you have to feel your way you'll come up short on a lot of your cuts because you just can't mash the blade up with the uh, branch you're getting ready to cut because it's out of sight it uh, tears them off pretty good though. I had no problem cutting. I'll do some more shaping on that tree. I got the worst of it off. That's spring trimming for that one. We'll move on to the next one. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. I enjoyed uh, putting a saw together and using it for the first time. Seems like a pretty simple process anybody can handle. Did a nice job on a tree. Didn't have to get up on a ladder. Didn't have to worry about gasoline and such. The electric part of it. Yeah, you need a nice long extension. If you already have one of those, you're good to go. If not, Harbor Freight will sell you one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I have about 85 other do-it-yourself videos on YouTube and some trips we've taken and even a little bit of comedy. So check out my channel, 69 Harley. S-I-X-T-Y, the numeral 9, Harley. I have one in my garage, but it doesn't run. This is your unconscious mechanic with a pole saw from Harbor Freight.